In terms of uh, additional agricultural assistance, really it's about getting those rural communities up and going, as, uh, as Graham was talking about. It's about dealing with this long-term inundation. So as I said, in some, some pockets there, the water could just not get away and they're lying in stagnant water uh, paddocks and houses for up to three months. And what we did after, uh, after working through the drought for such a long period, we wanted to implement some programs that we could get up and running quite quickly and which had actually worked through the drought period. And certainly we weren't replicating any of the support offered by, uh, the, through the National Disaster Relief and Recovery Arrangements or, or duplicating any of the activities of the Commonwealth. So what we put up, and as I said, these are millions, not billions, uh, agricultural Recovery Services, which was again uh, uh, just helping farmers in terms of getting back on their feet, be it sowing pastures, be it mastitis treatment for cows, and again working with private vets and a whole range of other parties in there. One which worked particularly successfully in the drought and is working very well again is the Flood Employment Program, where and that's been administered by the Catchment Management Authorities and people from those affected communities are involved in putting up fencing, riparian fencing and other activities which have long-term environmental benefits. Rural Financial Counselling Service was extended along with the, um, the matching funding from the Commonwealth for that scheme where uh, people can obtain free rural financial, uh, financial counselling. Flood Apprentice Retention Bonus Scheme was one, again, we administered through the drought and basically that's a $1,500 grant to businesses which are employing apprentices in those uh, small rural communities where we want to keep that youth in those communities. Uh, Sustainable Farm Families, a program administered by Western District Health Services in Victoria where again they'll go around and do a health assessment of farmers, fantastic participation rates and some really good uh, analyses on that program. So that program was rolled out with some of the uh, local governments. Uh, we provided additional support for local government to do some of this rural coordination, be it about removing damaged fences, be it about erecting fences, be it about just doing some work to get that community uh, up and going as soon as possible. And the last significant one was the Lower Loddon project, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. This is a aerial picture in January 2011 of Kerrang, uh, and you can see we've uh, got a bit of a theme here about levees, and certainly you can see the levee protecting that town and some of the critical infrastructure, uh, but certainly levees are a two-edged sword. Once the water's in there, you've got to knock it down to get it out again. Uh, so we certainly see levees as playing a really important role in protecting housing, or uh, critical infrastructure, uh, but certainly they have limitations in terms of uh, farming land and farming on floodplains. The Lower Loddon project, as I mentioned, was a $21 million project which was announced by the Minister for Water in Victoria in April 2001. And Lower Loddon uh, is up around that Kerrang area of Benjaroop and it had three previous flood studies and the levees were not the answer for protecting farmland and uh, there's a whole heap of issues. There's a, a parliamentary inquiry into levees in Victoria about who owns it, whose job it is to maintain them and a whole range of activities. So with the uh, Irrigators Recovery Task Force was formed and we took very much a risk management approach combined with very strong community engagement. Some of the previous studies had not had the the uh, necessary level of community engagement and I think the enormity of the, the recent flood situation probably helped uh, trigger uh, that community. So package announced three components of land buyback and we had done that previously in Victoria again uh, through the Rural Finance Corporation and they're involved again where in the Tambo Valley some years ago government bought back country, uh, revegetated that com some of that country, put together small farmlets and resold that country back, uh, back to the local community. So we're looking at changing the land use, which was largely irrigation on a floodplain, back to dry land farming, pulling together some of those packages uh, and just focusing on the asset protection. 
Also looked at a facilitator irrigator recovery package where we were doing whole farm planning, solidity surveys and independent business advice because certainly the water had been lying on some of these properties for an extended period of time. We weren't sure of the flooding effect on some of the salinity levels in this country so we we're going back to first principles with them. And the third critical one, levees and groundwater bores. Uh, so there were certainly repairs of some of the levees uh, and, and some of the bores involved. With this project, significant project, and we really went back to first principles and the vision was this reducing the risk of further emotional and financial trauma in, to that local community by changing the land use, reducing the risk to houses and other infrastructure, and reducing the threats of floods, ruining farm businesses and future government infrastructure. So they were the three uh, main goals we were trying to achieve for this program. Progress to date, uh, remembering that these are small communities and uh, small communities have a range of views, um, but the, certainly we've settled on 13 properties involving significant uh, area and also the irrigation delivery shares. So that's, uh, that's about 3,500 megalitres over a 100 day period. So that's a significant amount of irrigation water coming out of that. There already was quite a few, quite a big decrease in the number of dairy farmers and that due to our 10 years of drought. But it, it's, uh, it's really transforming what that country looks like. We've got negotiations which have been proceeding on, on 10 other properties. So we'll think we'll have about two thirds of the critical area will be uh, actively engaged in this program. And the household levy option will be fully subscribed and that's not surprising in terms of having those levies around the household but uh, letting the flood, uh, flood on the plains. Uh, 308 irrigators have sought case management assistance where we sit down with them and actually map out, map, map out the future. Uh, 14 farmers have signed up for the grants for independent advice, which is quite a low number, but when you think that during the drought period, uh, through this same area, there was a, a program run over a couple of years about obtaining independent advice, uh, I, it's not that surprising that it was low. Range of soil salinity surveys completed, and uh, basically we've had, again, uh, 17,000 hectares either surveyed or currently undergoing a whole farm plan, which is really essential in terms of moving forward. So that's, the, uh, that's a quick run through on where we were for the, the, uh, the floods. What we have done and we always do do is we've done a uh, response or a final incident report of what we could have done better and we're building in some of those programs at the moment down there again. Uh, certainly and we're looking at our agricultural recovery framework about how we move from this immediate response to a, a longer term recovery phase. and. Uh, and at the whole of Victorian government level, uh, our ex-police commissioner, Neil Comrie, has done a significant report focusing on flood warnings and the response, and there's a green paper working through the Victorian government in how we can do it better, picking up some of the themes that uh, Queensland and others were doing. And uh, certainly there's ongoing uh, commitment in terms of updates on our ongoing response uh, and certainly we still have situations where the Charlton Hospital and some other hospitals aren't, uh, aren't up and going. Uh, but overall, uh, I think we learnt quite a bit during the drought. I think we have put some good programs in place, not duplicating any of the work of the Commonwealth, working very lo uh, closely with local government and providing wherever possible the support to those local communities in terms of enabling them to bounce back as quickly as possible. Thanks very much.